while the first Resident Evil game delivers the bulk of its terror through its haunted house setting. The stunning remake of Resident Evil 2 makes the zombies the stars of the show. These are the most horrifying undead shufflers the series has produced so far, with each one's warped, bloody face telling a story of how they got infected. Like in all the best zombie games, Resident Evil 2's lurching horrors move unpredictably, snatching and swiping at you while you miss shot after shot in panic. Honestly, you could elect any of Treyarch's Call of Duty games to this list because their zombie horde modes are the best around. Black Ops 4 had a very good zombies mode, however, the reason we've singled out Black Ops Cold War because it is a nice entry point for those who've not played zombies mode. It also has a fresh story, great tutorials, easter eggs galore, and the original map is much easier for the classic survival modes. There's still tons to sink your teeth into and the reception from those who have played it has been more positive than prior installments. In some zombie fiction the horde are not mindless, not exactly, but guided in their pursuit for brains by one bigger brain. Here, you are the hive mind, directing the pandemic from behind your keyboard. Developers no clip argue, the only way to survive the zombie apocalypse is to be the apocalypse. For those who found the cause of lemmings too noble, Zombie Night Terror is a zombie game's twist on that puzzler's format. You are offered a sign long view of the black and white action and given ways to influence it, guiding your unthinking chargers over the booby traps they would otherwise fall blindly into. Project Zomboid tells you as you walk gingerly into the overrun American countryside for the first time. This is not going to end well. But you can drag out the inevitable for some time, eking out an isometric existence through the shrewd scavenging, food sourcing and first aid skills you will have honed well from the best survival games. The entire map is open and guidance is minimal, only good preparation and a tab open to the Zomboid wiki can save you. Once you have established a domestic base, the game becomes a matter of tense smash and grabs, weighing up potential loot against the chance of zombie encounters. Long-term survival means rebuilding rural America. Constructing and maintaining farms and adopting a defensive playstyle, seeing as Left 4 Dead spiritual successor Back 4 Blood is still some months away, a new game that rigidly follows the formula of co-op zombie slaying that the L4D series popularized will have to suffice. World War Z doesn't offer anything revolutionary of its own to that formula, but it's still heaps of fun when playing through its gauntlet-style campaign missions with friends, upgrading your kid over time and watching rotting corpses explode under heavy machine gun fire. It's also a bona fide hit, having sold over 2 million copies through the Epic Games Store since launch, despite an arguable abuse of the concept of early access stretching backer patients to breaking point, there is more than enough to stand alone days to remind you why the mod garnered all that goodwill. You will still endure the nervy survival phase flitting from greenhouse to gas station in an effort to gather gear and avoid conflict. Days is one of those zombie games where the ravenous undead are the nut what haunts your every step. You will still have those Cormac McCarthy moments on the road, scanning a stranger for clues as to their intentions. Once you are subsisting on soda and scraps, however, Days opens up. That greenhouse becomes a proper farming plot. It is enough to keep you and passing traders alive. If you're looking for story then you'll be better served by the original State of Decay, however, the sequel does an admirable job of fleshing out the systems of the first game to make for a more satisfying open world survival experience. Playing like an rebounds per game, State of Decay 2 is an online zombie game that initially surprises with its permit. You will pick a protagonist from your community of survivors and take them out into the wild to find the necessary food fuel, or drugs to keep the rest alive. Once they collapse into bed back home, or under the blows of the undead, you can take control of another character from your base with their own background, personality, and combat abilities. One of the best co-op games and zombie games on PC, that is not left for dead 2, Killing Floor 2 is a chaotic, frantic rush as you blow out undead brains to rambunctious heavy metal. Zombies of all shapes and sizes come at you thick and fast, making Killing Floor 2 an excellent pickup and play co-op title. But as you devote more time to indulging in a spot of zombie bashing, 
killing floor 2 becomes a zombie game with an engrossing tactical element, do you spend your blood soaked resources now, or save them for a tougher future confrontation? Killing Floor 2's gameplay, most importantly, feels great to play as a wonderfully gory shooter with friends, its best mechanic only just made it in at the last minute, too. It is not an especially pretty or polished game, but Dead Island remains one of the best zombie games on PC. With its first-person shuffler bashing and four-player co-op, it is tempting to compare Techland's first zombie game outing to Left 4 Dead 2, but it is what Dead Island borrows from Fallout 3 that makes it compelling. The island in question is a small one off the coast of Papua New Guinea, and its undead denizens are hungry to scupper your hard-earned holiday. Any narrative interest begins and ends here, but, after you have waded through a dull first hour, this little oceanian island opens up to reveal a world of impressive scale. Techland built on the runaway, shuffle away, dash success of Dead Island with another open world zombie game kitted out with customizable melee weapons and four player co-op. And to begin with they appear to be cut from the same cloth, offering directed busy work for the first hour. Then Dying Light takes that cloth, stuffs it into a bottle, sets it on fire, and hurls it from a great height into a pack of undead. Like its survivors in a post-outbreak world, Dying Light is a scavenger. Its map icons and diversions are ripped from the Ubisoft formula. The parkour is nicked from Mirror's Edge. But the clambering informs every other aspect of the game, turning this into an explorative, emergent adventure. For best results, ignore the more repetitive missions and take to the rooftops of Heron, built with vertical meandering in mind. It has been 8 years, but Left 4 Dead 2 always looked economical in the way Valve shooters are. That means that unlike many zombie games, it has aged well, despite the lack of any fancy, physically based rendering or global illumination. It is a zombie game that certainly has not been bettered, even when compared to differently themed siblings Vermintide and the two Payday games. Arguably, Left 4 Dead lost some of the exquisite balance of its tiny armory by expanding it for the sequel, filling the world with impromptu melee weapons and special ammo types. But, nevertheless, Left 4 Dead 2 and the original are still the best co-op games around, Telltale's The Walking Dead series. A conversation system tied to a timer, inspired by social anxiety. A sense of interpersonal warmth framed by overarching gloom, like a campfire on a cold night. There is a tendency to disarm you with humor and half an hour of respite before swiping cruelly at the characters you have come to care about in a way that only the best adventure games on PC can. Those evil geniuses. It is something we would like to see from more zombie games. The Walking Dead is not really about the walkers. They are merely the backdrop for a series of stories about human nature. The key characters here are capable of both great kindnesses and unforgivable evils in the name of protecting their own. The only reassurance is found at the end of each episode, when you get to see what percentage of fellow players made the same terrible compromises as you. You'll have plenty such agonizing decisions to make by the time it comes round to finale, but The Walking Dead. The final season is the series at its best, in the original Zombie Army trilogy, itself a spin-off of the Sniper Elite games, we fought Hitler's army of undead and banished him to hell, but now he's crawled back out and brought an even bigger zombie threat with him. As we describe in our Zombie Army 4 review, there are several similarities to be drawn with Left 4 Dead. You stomp, shoot and slash your way through zombie hordes, between brief reprieves and safe houses, accompanied by up to three of your friends. The game goes hard on the camp, gratuitous fun of guiltless gore, and the testicle-busting x-ray kill cam makes sniping your foes as satisfying as mashing them with a hammer. After all, these are not only undead abominations, but also Nazis. Even the gentlest pacifist can enjoy blowing them up like a barrel of melons and watching the juices fly. You can even modify and upgrade your guns to shoot flames or spew out lightning, and create a custom skill build to mow down the zombies with brutal efficiency.